Jiri you seem to think you are the star of a cooking show and we are your loyal audience. In reality you are the little monkey on the street smashing symbols together and we are the crowd throwing quarters at you. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Giri's Kitchen. This week we're making Filipino food again uh, because I enjoyed eating and making the pork adobo so much the last time and so I really want to try Filipino food again so this time we're gonna be making a full course meal we're gonna have a main which is gonna be the chicken in a sal we're gonna have a side which is the garlic fried rice and we're gonna make a tres leches uh, ube cake I think it's gonna be really really yummy I can't wait to get started so let's get cooking shall we okay I'm gonna get my egg yolk out one egg yolk and 65 grams of milk I think and where's my vanilla extract? Okay, I'm gonna put my ube flavoring inside as well. So I'm just mixing all the wet ingredients. Pom pom, I'm trying to speak here and you're like making it impossible. 60 grams of flour. Again, I'm gonna sift this just to get the lumps out. Okay, and then I'm gonna try to mix it again. And then you don't have to mix this too much. As long as it's mixed quite well and you don't see too many lumps anymore, you can stop because you don't want to make too much gluten because you don't want your cake to be like too, too, too stiff. And we're gonna be making a sponge cake so that it can soak up all the milk that we're gonna use in a little bit. I have two egg whites that I'm gonna whip up into a meringue. And I'm gonna add in 50 grams of sugar slowly. I'm gonna incorporate the sugar slowly so that it doesn't uh, overburden the, um, the egg whites too much so it can whip up a little bit easier and then we're going to combine the egg whipped egg whites like the meringue with the egg yolk batter so i have sugar measured out already i have 50 grams of sugar and these are just two egg whites it's easier to work with cold egg whites compared to warm and then you just want to slowly whip it side to side not in a circle circle does not actually incorporate any air you want to make sure you're doing it side to side you're you're throwing the egg whites around so that it can lift up into the air to get more um, aeration. So once it looks like bubbly like this, when it kind of looks like cum, it looks like spit or cum, a little bit of the sugar, maybe one third, not all of it. You want to add it into three separate additions so you don't overburden the egg whites. Another one third of it and then slowly mix it in. But it's not too bad. This is like really, really soft peaks. I'm slowly adding in the actual batter into the meringue that I just whipped. And you want to be careful. You can use a spatula, but there is a technique for using a spatula. If you're using a whisk, it might be a little bit easier. I don't know, but you're trying not to deflate the egg whites. You want to keep it nice and airy and bouncy. So I'm just like incorporating into like circular motions and like flipping it a little bit. So I have my oven preheated already to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the color. And I'm going to put this in the oven now for about 20 25 minutes. We're gonna wait for the cake to bake and we're gonna work on our tres leches first. And I'm gonna add in 40 grams of condensed milk uh, and we're gonna need 50 grams of cream and a little bit of milk, same amount of evaporated milk and also a little bit of um, vanilla. Okay, I'm just gonna mix this a little bit. Oh, a little bit of salt, just a tiny little bit to balance the sweetness. And then we're gonna keep mixing that in a little. And we can set this onto the side. And once the cake is done baking and also done cooling, we can slowly uh, poke the cake with some holes. And then we're gonna let the milk seep through. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit of my lemongrass. Okay, we're gonna start the marinade because the chicken could use a little bit of extra time to sit. The longer you marinate it for, the better it is. But for the purpose of stream, I'll just marinate it for as long as I can. Um, but normally, if you have the time, try to do it for at least four or five hours or overnight. And before I do that, I'm not gonna chop it or dice it really fine. I'm actually gonna use the back of my knife, the handle part, and I'm gonna smack it. I'm going to whack it so like, it breaks the lemongrass open without actually having to uh, chop into smaller pieces so I can extract the flavor of the lemongrass uh, without actually having to eat it. So I'm going to just hold it down and whack it. You want to keep pounding it until it kind of breaks open like this. Oh, we need ginger and garlic. 
So for ginger and garlic, I'm just gonna use my zester to extract more of the juice. I'm gonna peel it a little bit more. I don't know how much ginger I need. Two tablespoons of ginger? I'm just gonna peel it a little bit more so I can grate in about two tablespoons worth of ginger. You can obviously chop this, but I'm too lazy to chop it. And I feel like if you zest it, you can get the flavor and the juice out a lot easier than just chopping it. I need about two tablespoons of ginger, or garlic. Jiri, you seem to think you are the star of a cooking show and we are your loyal audience. In reality, you are the little monkey on the street smashing symbols together and we are the crowd throwing quarters at you. I was gonna say that's not true, but that's kind of true. I need a quarter cup of brown sugar. Quarter cup of brown sugar. So this is the coconut vinegar. Some of you guys said that you guys don't add in coconut vinegar, but the recipe that I found told me to use it. So I'm gonna use it for the sake of the recipe. Okay, we need one cup. One cup is a lot, damn. Okay, I'm gonna add in the half cup of calamansi juice. I don't have calamansi, again, I wasn't able to find it. So the recipe said I can, uh, what is it called? Substitute it with lemon juice. So unfortunately, you guys are gonna have to make do with lemon juice, I apologize, but I wish I could get it, but. And we're gonna need one cup of Sprite. I think this is a secret ingredient. I could be very wrong. Maybe you guys might be surprised, but you're actually supposed to be unironically adding in Sprite into the marinade for a little bit of sweetness. And maybe the carbonation also helps with the tenderization. And then we're gonna add in salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna grab a spoon, I guess. Mix it up a little bit. Break down the brown sugar. And before I start uh, putting in the chicken in, I'm gonna actually use skewers and I'm gonna poke holes in the chicken in hopes that I can let the marinade puncture into the meat a little bit better um, compared to if I was just to, you know. I poked some holes in the chicken so that it, the marinade can enter the chicken a little bit better. I'll just let it sit and marinate at room temperature. If you're marinating it for longer, then please put it into the fridge. You don't want to let it spoil, but because we're gonna be cooking this right away, I'm gonna let this sit at room temperature for a little bit. And I'm gonna take a look at my cake and see what's going on. Here's our cake. I tapped it on the counter a little bit to get rid of some extra air. So we're gonna let that cool down on the uh, lifted up cooling rack so a little bit of the hot air can dispel from the bottom as well. The recipe originally didn't ask to put ube uh, flavoring in the tres leches, but I think I'm gonna add in a little bit just to maintain that really rich purple color. So I'm gonna add in a little, like a little, a little drop. I wanna maintain the nice rich purple color if I can. Okay, I'm gonna put that aside. I need to wait for the cake to cool almost completely before I can actually soak it in the milk. So we're gonna do other things while that's happening. We're probably gonna work on the garlic fried rice now. So I have a tiny little bowl here. I'm gonna make my uh, butter uh, basting seasoning for when I bake the uh, chicken in the oven. I don't actually have an indoor grill, unfortunately. I can, I'm going to basically grill it on my flat top and then throw it into the oven for the rest, of, for the remainder of the cook and it'll cook like that slowly. So we're gonna do our basting sauce now, which is half a cup of softened uh, salted butter. So I have salted butter and we're gonna do three tablespoons of annatto oil Okay, I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna eyeball it a little bit, okay? And calamansi juice I don't have, so I'm gonna add in one teaspoon of lemon juice instead. And some salt, a little bit of salt. And add a little bit of oil as well, the three tablespoons. Da, 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 da. Okay, how is our tres leches doing? This is our ube sponge cake. It feels quite cool now. And then I'm going to grab my leches. This is the one that had cream, evaporated milk, and condensed milk, and also some vanilla, a little bit of salt, and ube flavoring as well. And we're gonna pour all of it into our cake. Oh, before we do that, before we do that, I'm gonna get my skewer. I'm gonna poke a few holes in my cake. And the reason for that is I wanna make sure the cake, the milk can actually soak through the cake and you want to put all of the milk into the cake it looks like a lot but the milk will be able to soak up all the extra liquid and i'm going to pour it slowly 
So um, the milk is all in and I'm going to just stir that around a little bit. Again, it looks like a lot, don't worry about it. It's gonna take a little bit of time for the cake to soak through. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to actually wrap this up with saran wrap and I'm gonna keep it in the fridge for um, about an hour. We'll see how long it's gonna take to cook everything else. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook off the chicken first or I'm gonna grill it first and then throw it into the oven. And then while that's baking, we're gonna work on our rice. Let me get some oil. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the chicken and I'm gonna dry it off a little bit, I think. I think that's, I think that's the correct way, maybe. So it's not so wet and it doesn't splash all over the place and the garlic and ginger won't burn. Okay, I'm gonna do skin side down. We're waiting for a nice color on it before we turn it around. And don't worry if it's not cooked through. We're gonna be cooking in the oven. We're only waiting for a nice color. Oh, look at the color on this one. And we're gonna baste this. I'm gonna baste the back first so the back gets the color. And then I'm gonna turn it back onto the top so the skin can render out in the oven. So don't worry, the chicken is still raw. It should be raw. So don't worry if it's a little soft when you pick it up. I'm gonna grab my little basting brush. You can do a pastry brush, you can do a regular brush. And then we're just gonna baste the back and the front. So this is the back of the chicken. I wanna make sure there's like some nice buttery goodness on the back of it as well. So uh, ovens, I set it to 360 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna bake this for roughly 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna be making the garlic fried rice right now. Garlic fried rice, um, as far as the recipe goes, it looks very, very simple. It's literally just day old rice. I made this last night and I cooled it down. This is about two cups of dry rice and a shit ton of garlic, a shit ton. This is all I have left. So this is about 15, 16 cloves of garlic. So we're gonna prepare the garlic first because that's gonna take the most amount of prep, which really is not that long to begin with. It's just literally cutting some garlic. I personally like to chop off the butt of the garlic because I think it has like, not, not that it tastes anything. It doesn't taste weird or anything, but I just don't like looking at the ass of the garlic. I prefer if my garlic was nice and clean. Okay, so I'm gonna have my garlic and I'm, this is when a cleaver comes in handy. I'm just gonna smash all the garlic so it opens up a little bit. This is how I like to chalk my garlic by default, but I like to smash it so it breaks it apart a little bit like this. And that releases some of the oil, but it also makes the chopping process a lot easier. Cause we're only going for a rough chop. I'm gonna have it in like diced pieces. So it's gonna be nice and like intertwined with the rest of the rice. And I'm gonna set a little bit aside for the garnish. Okay, so I have my garlic ready. This is all the garlic that I have, which is about 15, 17 cloves, something like that. And we're gonna add a lot of oil. We wanna slowly basically cook off the garlic until it's nice and brown and golden. And we want to have the flavor of the garlic infused into the oil itself. So it might look like a lot, but it definitely is a little bit necessary. So we're gonna add in a shit ton of oil. Again, it might look like a lot, but we do need it a little bit to render out some of that garlic. And we're gonna put it on low heat, not medium heat, not high heat. We want medium low heat. We wanna make sure that the garlic does not burn. Garlic burns very, very easily. And we're slowly going to slow fry the garlic until it's nice and golden and it's crispy. And we're gonna reserve a little bit onto the side for garnish. And we're gonna keep the rest of it in there for the rice. So it's not supposed to start boiling and frying and having really crazy action. It's supposed to be a very low simmer in the oil. And you wanna keep tossing it. You wanna keep jostling it um, so it doesn't stick together, it doesn't burn and you wanna slowly keep an eye out on it. It should take a few minutes. It's not supposed to happen very quickly. A few moments later. It's time, it's time. Nice and golden brown. Nice and golden brown. I'm gonna stop it right there. I turn the heat off so it won't continue to cook. I'm gonna leave the rest of it in there so it can infuse with the rice. But I left a little bit on the outside for garnish. I'm gonna add in the rice now. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat back on now to a medium, I would say. And I'm just gonna let the rice absorb all the oil, all the beautiful garlic, and we're gonna add in salt, obviously some MSG, and then we're gonna keep stirring this baby, and that's literally it. You don't need pepper, you don't need like soy sauce, nothing. It's literally just rice, oil, shit ton of garlic. Okay, we're gonna let that sit. I'm gonna check on my chicken thing. Look, chat, look, look. Oh, oh, and then I can sprinkle the garlic on top. This is a reserved garlic. Oh, listen to the crunch. Mm. 
it's crunchy. And then I'm gonna add a little, now I'm gonna add a little bit of soy sauce, maybe a little bit of extra butter to kind of thicken it up and make a nice little sauce for the chicken. Ooh, ooh, no chicken. No, no chicken, stay, stay chicken. Lower it at a pad of butter. Okay, boop, there you go. And then we're gonna let that reduce, reduce, reduce. I'm going to spoon a little bit of the sauce over the chicken. All right, okay, Oni bro, do you want to try it first? And let me know how it is. <laughs> it's popping. Okay, okay, eight out of 10, okay. Okay, that's not too bad. And here we have our completed meal. We made garlic fried rice with extra crispy garlic. We have a, a baked chicken in a salt. It's tangy, it's savory, it's buttery. It's very, very delicious. I can't wait to dig in and try it for myself. Um, and we, as well, we have a dessert. We made a ube tres leches cake with a little bit of whipped cream on top. I actually haven't tried tres leches cake before either, so I'm very excited to try everything. Um, if you guys ever try the recipe, leave a comment down below. I would love to see how it turned out for you guys or if there's anything I can change or improve for next time. Um, please let me know as well. I, I'm, I'm always curious to learn authentic foods and authentic cooking, whether it's the ingredients or techniques. So please let me know if I did okay, if I did terrible, anything I can improve on, I would love to know. Um, and make sure you, if you like the video, click the like button because I do post very regularly and subscribe, notification bell, all those things. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye! Kiri is 10% sus, 20% cringe, 15% concentrated power of smell, 5% <laughs> soon, 50% dairy, and 